Hey guys, oh. what's up? Aru. Did you know that the Shanzo Lofu wasn't the planet we were supposed to go to? Yeah, apparently we already had a designated next planet for the Express's journey. And the history behind it as well as what this planet is now are as terrifying as Sampo speaking to a broken television. So welcome to another video of someone stuck in space. Today's video is gonna be about the planet known as Panakani, the history and aeon behind it, what Panakani is like today, and finally some theories as to what may happen or what we might find there. Obviously this is just a theory so this planet may not even be out until, I don't know, 2.0 or 3.0 or heck maybe never. Timestamps are where they're supposed to be, let's go. If you're wondering how I found out about this, you're gonna need to speak to Welt and Himiko in the Express after defeating Kokolia in an invitation without proffer. Now I suggest speaking to every character before and after Kafka Cinematic just to be sure you get their dialogues. And be sure to speak to them twice or three times over, and don't go into the passenger cabin to speak with Dan Hung either. There's a bunch of other information you can find out about, like who's the real conductor of the Express, the other member who came with Welt when they joined and where the Express found Welt before joining. I've also seen some mentions that this dialogue appears all the way back to after you defeated Svarog. Be sure to check at that time too. It's kind of sad and pretty annoying that you can only know about this in specific parts of the game at specific times in the game as well and it won't be given to you in any other way than to replay the game itself. Although the story is good, this isn't really like a Souls game where you can have that kind of new game plus 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 replayability and some FOMO for in-game lore might develop as well if this keeps up. But luckily you've stumbled upon this video so yeah, now you know. This is from my experience of the game after playing it over 3 times for recording purposes but if you have a better option or would like to clarify anything, please tell everyone in the comments below. With that out of the way, let's talk about Penakani. A long time ago when Akavili the Trailblaze was still alive, Penakani or what my comments say, the penal colony is as you think it is. It was once a prison planet of the Inter-Astral Peace Corporation, which is currently the biggest galactic trade faction in the game, which not only speaks volumes of how powerful the IPC is, but also regarding the size of Honkai Star Rail's universe. It's still a vague idea considering the game is still recent, but an entire planet designed to hold criminals means that there are a ton of other planets or galaxies within the game that have this form of penal colony. Sometime while Panacani was still a prison planet, it became infested with a Stellaron corruption. Weirdly enough, even though the planet was filled with living prisoners, the IPC gave up on Panacani and straight up left, leaving the prison planet with quite a sad and cruel fate. I never thought that a big and popular faction such as the IPC would leave a planet once Stellaron corruption plagues it. Then again, you could say the same for Yarilo 6. However, it was still barely saved by the Architects, which technically isn't the same faction as the IPC. But this could infer that the IPC only cares for one thing, that is trade and profit. Even though all the profits they make are used for their Aeon clip-off, they might just simply leave at the first sign of negative sales or any looming threat instead of helping them. But my spite for the IPC aside, the planet Panaconi actually survived the infestation of the Stellaron. And it's what made the planet what it is today. But the reasons for this planet's survival are both miraculous and pretty unsettling. At some point after the IPC left, Panacani tried looking for someone or something that could protect them and even aid them in any possible way from the Stellaron corruption. And the one who aided them was the one and only Aeon of Harmony, Zype or Shipei. Shipei took in the entire planet of Panacani and made them a member of the faction dedicated to them. The family and by extension, Shipei is a very peaceful group to say the least, with a borderline creepy and eerie feeling behind every member as well as their Aeon. Something else that's a bit creepy is you watching this video without liking, subscribing if you haven't yet, and clicking on the bell icon, you absolute phantom viewer. Thank you. Now let's move on to the harmonious faction that is the family. If you're curious to know about the family itself and why I think they're so creepy, then let me tell you a tale about one of Herta's possible travels or maybe some random person's travels with the people of the family. You can find what I believe to be context about them from Herta's memory bubbles. The memory bubble titled Family takes you to an opera house and a play 
called The King's Pleasure. You are seated right next to a Mr. Renoir, an unsettling, emotionless person you came to watch the play with, likely a member of the family. You start to watch the play itself and pretend to be amazed by it, trying not to raise attention or alarm. This Mr. Renoir seems to have noticed that you don't seem to genuinely enjoy the play and asks you with his emotionless face. You seem to be bored of this play. You answer that you're alright, but then you ask a pretty terrifying question. Does the family really exist? In response, Mr. Renoir calls for the waiter, bringing an exquisite box with a long narrow opening on the side. You hear a voice, put it in. You aren't sure if it was Mr. Renoir or someone else, but you sure heard a noise. With the unclear instruction, you place your hand in the box out of instinct. Why would you place your hand inside of the box? You are shocked by your very own reaction. With your hand in the box, you experience an overwhelming sense of guilt all over your very anatomy. Like a criminal waiting for judgment, you can feel the gaze of Mr. Renoir. No, the gaze of the waiter. No, the icy gaze and penetrating stare you feel is from the entire theater. Everyone is looking at you. And so the memory bubble ends. Whether or not this was Herta, I can't say, but if it was her, then the fact that Herta was able to go through all that and still be hell bent on seeking knowledge and stay true to the path of erudition is proof of how strong her willpower is as an emanator of Nos or Nos. Bear in mind the entire theater could have swarmed her like a hive of bees against a lone hornet, yet for some reason she survived. Unless that was one of her puppets and she merely kept the memory of the puppet with her. Or maybe that was the memory of a random person that she stumbled upon outside of the theater after being, well, swarmed. But back to Penacani. There's a lot of other creepy and unsettling instances regarding the family. Like the interview from one of the members and then the entire family suddenly answering, never. The hymns and songs of praise from every world under the harmony, as well as the many odes of harmony that the family has. Even the light cones have a really heavy emphasis on songs of praise. What's more is the creepy smile that the people in the light cone have. Human, beast person, even what seems like a Skrulamite is smiling and singing songs. The same emotionless smile that Mr. Renoir possesses. Yet what anyone would notice is that they aren't showing their eyes. The strongest part of the body that shows any emotion other than happiness can be seen in the eyes. If you've watched One Piece, then you know why these guys are smiling with tears down their faces. They are definitely not happy. If you haven't watched this, then you need to watch One Piece. Or at least this part. Comment below if you know what that scene is and definitely let everyone know about it. After some time, Panacone became known as the planet of festivities which is quite a turn coming from a planet filled with criminals. Today's Panacani is opening their borders to all the galactic factions to come and visit them on their first time sending out invitations. The IPC, which is also invited, has been taking into consideration the invitation sent by Panacani, stating that they will carefully examine the purpose behind such an invitation and will respond in a positive and friendly manner for the sake of being friends with other galactic factions. Weirdly enough, the Express is also invited to Panacani and Himiko intends to accept that invitation. But we're not going there as trailblazers to find a Stellaron, we're going there as guests of the family. But that plan changed since we already went to the Shanzo Lofu. And of course, there's also the Shanzo, but since they represent the hunt and are akin to the Galaxy Rangers, which are basically bounty hunters from what I could understand, but with more of a grudge against Yaoshi the Abundance, I don't think they'll be invited. Now let's talk more about Shipei. Shipei is the Aeon of Harmony and a plural Aeon from multiple harmonious worlds. The glorious Shipei of a thousand faces, very akin to the billions of faces that the family has, who all have the same face. 
chanting songs of joy and happiness. Battling the brutality of the laws of the universe, all who follow Shipei discard their selfishness and difference of every individual, and then fusing together into the one true melody that Shipei wishes. This is how Shipei and the family sees the universe as. An expanse of differences and selfishness that must become one with harmony. Something weird in their data archive is, and I quote, to have the strong help the weak and to protect life with death is the motivation of every family member to give themselves up in the name of harmony, both body and soul? Is this why the members are emotionless and all smile in unison, singing songs of praise and creating numerous odes, of which we still don't know how many there are yet? This adds to the eerie and unsettling vibe that the family already has. Another interesting bit about Shipei is the absorption of Enna the Order. See, Enna the Order and Shipei the Harmony have one thing in common, and that's unity. But because both Shipei and Enna have the same ideal or they have colliding paths, only one must rise over the two. Shipei being the one who became an Aeon before Enna the Order absorbed Enna. But was Enna not an Aeon already? Or were they not Aeons and one had to defeat the other? Aeons assimilating or absorbing other Aeons have happened more than once already, or at least that we know of. But this raises the question of whether or not the absorbed Aeon can or cannot affect the current one in any way. Shipei absorbing Enna does fit with her aesthetic of multiple faces, however. There's also Shipei's Aztec name. Shipei Totek, which translates to the Flayed Lord. Funnily enough, there is an annual festival to Shipei Totek where war prisoners were sacrificed in a gladiatorial ritual, followed by wearing the skins of the war prisoners. Hmm. There's also slave sacrifices who were also flayed and yeah. For the sake of saving my channel from demonetization, if you're curious about how Shipei Totek festivals work, you're free to find out on your own. Looking at Panahani named the planet of festivals, and that it was a planet of prisoners and criminals turned into the family, we could maybe imagine what their festivals would look like. And on top of that, they're inviting other factions to come celebrate with them. So uh, <laughs> yeah, Panahani. Lastly, Enna the Order, whose Chinese translation Taiyi is a name given to the Supreme God of Heaven and means the Great Unity or Great Oneness. There are other gods and names that come in conjunction with the word Taiyi with interesting meanings such as the Great Primordial Unity of Yin and Yang. If I'm wrong with any of these translations, just tell me in the comments. The faction that follows Enna the Order is called the Beyond the Sky Choir, who used to create records that can only be played on specific phonographs. And these phonographs were made by the choir's devoted audiences, of which the Express has a phonograph, repaired, used, and is the favorite item of Himiko in her travels, apart from coffee. Maybe Himiko is actually a follower of Enna. I mean, looking at how she dresses, you could say that she looks like an angelic choir member. Or Himiko is simply a seasoned collector and happened to have stumbled upon this very specific monograph. The faction seem to only exist in legends as well, so nobody knows who is a member or if they actually exist. And there we go, Panacani, the planet of festivities. Did you guys enjoy the video? Comment below, are you guys excited for the next planet? Is there any other planet you would want to talk about? Do let everyone know in the comments. And if you did enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to stay updated to my channel. I make both Star Rail and Genshin videos as well as Fontaine literally just being next door and Kafka is also coming up. So get ready for more videos. That's gonna be it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe to my links, and stay mad theorists. Bye!